Hello and welcome back to Modded Minecraft Feed the Bees All the Mods 6. So I'm fresh back returned from my trip to the other dimension, the Piglin homeworld, where I've slain countless dragons. And last episode, we named our dragon Sapphira, and she slayed her first ice dragon. And oh man, she took him out no sweaterino. It was amazing. But this episode, what we're going to do is use our ill-gotten gains. I'm going to count up my dragon scales and all of my loot and see if we have what it takes to craft a dragon forge. But before then, it's time to build a roost for Sephira. I thought about building like a whole castle and things, but I thought a better way was just to dig into the mountain and create her a large underground kind of cave layer because Sephira is a pretty freaking huge dragon and to build a castle big enough to house her would be nuts. It wouldn't really be possible. So we've got loads of gunpowder. Let's build some TNT. Now there's lots of different types of TNT. There's obviously baseline TNT, but what is that used to make? Let's see, obsidian TNT. It's probably quite good. A mechanist's workbench from Chipped. What the hell is Chipped? Oh, I want to see this now. Let's do it. So I hope you guys are having or have had a very excellent week. I hope everything is going pretty A-OK -okay with you. Everything's going pretty good with me. I've been thinking about getting a dog, uh, which is, um, I guess, maybe a point of contention because um, I sacrificed my last dog, in Minecraft at least, just to be able to get a sword. And even then, I accidentally destroyed the sword and had to make a new one. So, um, yeah, I'm not exactly the best parent out there, but uh, I have been considering getting a dog. Okay, so this is... Oh my god, look at this thing. This is a mechanist's workbench from Chipped. I wanted to build this because I didn't know what it was. I still don't know what it is, and I still don't know what Chipped mod is. But let's take a look. Chipped. Oh, whoa, look at this. So I guess maybe it's just for decoration, which honestly, I don't mind. These are really cool looking blocks. Anyway, where were we? Well, you know what? Maybe we're going the old fashioned route and we're just going to make a whole bunch of TNT. So how does a couple of stacks sound? Sounds very gratuitous to me. Let's do it. Now we'll also need uh, some levers to set this bad boy off. So let me first up show you guys how many scales we got. In fact, you should probably count these and turn them into blocks so that we have a better idea. Oof, it is getting so laggy. Man, don't worry though, by the time this video's gone out, I should have my P new PC. I'm gonna need a few days to get that all configured and, and set up. So, um, some of these videos might be recorded in advance so that I can spend a week just setting myself up and getting my recording set up all tickety-boo. Now, where was I? Dragon scales. So we're going to take the scales out of my inventory. And as you can see here, we killed a lot of fire and ice dragons, some lightning dragons, mostly stage three, uh, one stage four, because it's really hard to find them underground. We also got a blue dragon egg, which was a bit of a bit of a turn for the books. But here we go. Dragon scales. We could actually hatch that mother trucker and uh, maybe give him a roost next to Sephira. That might be cool, actually. Yeah. Basically, you need a specific color to make a block. So you see we've got seven silver scales here. That's useless because we can't combine it with different colors. At least I don't think. Check it out. Seven, a black one, and an amethyst one? Nope, no deal. You gotta have all of the same type of scale. Which isn't so bad, but it means for like colors like sapphire, we can only get one block and we have eight left over, which is really wasteful. So it could happen that, oh man, yeah, look, eight white dragon scales as well. It could turn out that we just don't have enough blocks because we've got a really odd number of scales. Although I'm quietly confident. So let's see, 11, 21, 29, 36, 42, 47, 52, 55. I think 55 is absolutely plenty dragon scales and bricks for us to get a dragon forge. So that's no worries. Put that in the bank. Think about that later. Now, the side of this mountain. We haven't really done anything with this whole kind of mountain area up along the top of the coast, but it is a pretty cool looking area. As you can see, mountains in this mod pack are super big and super grandiose. We do have the problem that we got some weird pumpkins on the edge. So we'll just take out the pumpkins first. Off you go. Ripperoni and pumpkin -aroni. 
Oh man, can you imagine a pizza with pumpkin on it? That sounds disgusting. I've had some pretty rough pizzas though in my time. Uh, just recently actually, my partner cooked for me a vegan pizza. And uh, let me tell you, never again. Never again, Domino's for me. Domino's or bust. No, Domino's is way too salty. Okay, so we wanna kinda carve into this mountain a bit and we're gonna use some TNT to help us do that. Oh yeah, now watch out, there's creepers about, but uh, let's, uh, let's begin with a bit of TNT. Okay, so that's not super impactful. We might need a little bit more TNT. There we go, that's a little bit more. Oh, now that's what I'm talking about. That's a bit much, that's a little bit bigger hole, isn't it? Pretty cool. What if we uh, dig a cool little tunnel into this mountain? Like this. Oh, creeper. And what I want to do is put like a whole bunch of TNT here. And let's see if this works. So, uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my backpack and I've got this very cool item called the Infinity Wand. And this lets me put even more blocks down of an existing block that's there. So as you can see, I can now duplicate all of this TNT pretty massively. Sounds pretty cool, huh? Now we've run out of TNT, but I feel like we've got a nice healthy amount of TNT here to get things going. So let's see what happens when we blow this mother. Okay. Oh. Oh. Um. Well, let's take a closer look. It seems like it's n a nice big hole that we've got here now. Oof, now I'm going to need uh, I'm going to need my night vision charm for this. So this is going to be a bit ugly, but I think it's required at the moment. Oh man, it looks like I'm playing base Minecraft. How ugly. But, oh yeah, actually, this is a really nicely sized hole. I'm very impressed. Very good job, TNT. I was a bit nervous there, because we're not too far away from the base, and I didn't really want my base to go boom boom. So let's just hollow out this bit a little bit more, so that the dragon that we're going to put here has room to breathe. Because don't forget, this is a freaking huge dragon. And that should be okay in terms of an entrance. Okay, let's just clear this up a bit, clean, do a bit of cleaning. Now, do we think this is big enough for our dragon? I think if we just take away some of this cave top here, because it looks a bit rough. And you know what? I think that's roughly about size for our dragon. So now we're going to put down a layer of cobblestone. And uh, this is where having the wand is going to come in super handy. We're going to put down some cobblestone as a nice flat surface for our dragon to sit in. Now the way we do this is we just go to the back end here and just put down a very thin layer. Oh yeah, now that's worked really well. This has become a really nice flat floor and we've put this down in no time at all. This was a super quick operation. Oh man, speaking of operations though, I am very excited for the new Doctor Strange movie. Got tickets, front row seats. Well, not front row, because when you're at the front row in a cinema, you just can't see anything at all. It's terrible. But sometimes you've got to sit there. Sometimes you get to the cinema late, and oh man, all the good seats are taken, and you have to sit right in the front. And you get a really bad neck, because, uh, you know, you got to look up. Oh, it's the worst, isn't it? It's terrible. It's terrible. So now we have a big flat area. Let's just get rid of some of this quartz and stuff. A big flat area of cobblestone. And yet, you don't have to tell me, that looks real, real bad. So what we're going to do to liven up this build just a little bit. Man, this is turning into like a bit of a build episode. But what we're going to do is we're going to create something called a chisel. And you're like, what? I know what a chisel is, right? Well, chisels have a cool function that lets you right click to change what a block looks like. And I'll show you why that's relevant in a second. 
boom, boom, boom. So check this out. It has multiple chiseling modes, it says. So let's see if we can change what the chiseling mode is. Panel, chisel a three by three square of blocks, chisel a three by one column of blocks, or chisel a row. Well, we're gonna go for the uh, three by three so that we get a bit of volume on the go. And uh, yeah, let's give it a go. Actually, what's cool about having this night vision charm enabled is that even if it's nighttime, I can still see everything. I can see it all. So here we go. Now when I right click on this cobblestone, oops, no. Do I left click? There we go. When I left click on this cobblestone, oh, it's a baby. Rip. As you can see, it turns it into like, well, cracked cobblestone. And that in itself doesn't look amazing. But what you're supposed to do, and we're going to go like kind of just get painterly here. And we're just going to go around and just kind of like randomly tap on a lot of these bricks and stuff. Just to give this area a bit of texture. It doesn't matter about making the perfectly designed area. That's not what we're going for. All we really want is a little bit of texture to make this area just look a little bit, you know, cooler. And now, as you can see, it doesn't look super amazing, but it looks a lot, lot neater than it did before. So again, we're going to change the mode now to a bit of a column of blocks and do that a few times as well, just to mix up the shapes and things so there aren't too many squares around and it doesn't look too uniform. Now, we're also going to do the same thing around the edge of the cavern. And what this will do as well is give us some texture and some boundary between the ground and the walls of the cave. And again, these are just the secret building tips that'll help you improve your builds. They're not super, you know, they're not, you're not going to win any awards doing this, but it will make an area look a little bit nicer. And at this stage in the game, diamond chisels are super easy to make, so it's not like we really care about losing the resources. And because we're climbing up walls now, we're going to change the mode to vertical columns. And that's going to, yeah, that's going to just be so much nicer as well. And now with any painting, it's always good to take a step back and take a look at what you've made. And check it out. I think that looks kind of cool. We've got the makings, the beginnings of a pretty cool dragon's cave. Okay, so we have a kind of like a rocky dragon roost here. What else can we do to make this look pretty cool? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to add some braziers. So let's dig a little bit of a hole here because this looks like a nice shape hole for some lava. And we're going to have some lava just come down through this little bit and into a pool on the ground. And we're going to decorate this entire cave with lava because nothing to me screams dragons like a nice pool of lava and some lava waterfalls. I'm a bit nervous that the dragon's too small for this, so I'm going to get my horn out. And put the dragon down for now, just to make sure he's got enough room in here, because he might not, you know? Ooh, well, let's take a look. <laughs> oh, no! Well, he's he. it's definitely on the smaller side, isn't it? Oh, man, his tail's in the water. His wings are all up in the walls. This is just not going to do. This thing needs to be way bigger. So go back in your horn, pal. So back to the drawing board. Time to make this thing much more massive. Okay, I'm thinking this is much more like it. And to be honest, if it has to be bigger than this, <laughs> I don't know. I think I might just give up. This is insanely freaking huge. So I hope Safira appreciates how much effort we've gone to to make her a little roost that she can call home. Okay, and that'll do. Let's give it the same chisel treatment around the outside. Although, let's just plop her down one more time and make sure she's okay now. Oof, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a close fit, but you know what it'll do. Let's just give her a bit of room around her head so she can actually see where she is. And there we go, that looks about big enough, but oh my god, is she a large lady. Now, I'm... I'm I'm not going to shame her for her size, but it's difficult to find a place for her to live. She is just so huge. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to whip out my old friend, the torch launcher. Where is my... Oh, it's back at base. Tell you what, let's go get some lava then and decorate this cave. Oh! Okay, we found lava. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh my God. Just. Uh, 
Okay, thank God we found water and we found lava. Right, let's grab some lava in these buckets and get the hell out of Dodge. What a pain in the caboose. Okay, now the problem over here is the fact that we can't see how dark it is. So we're going to turn off our night vision charm. Brace yourselves, it's about to get very, very dark. And we're also going to start putting down our lava buckets to bring some light into this cave via natural methods. And there we go, that kind of works. We've kind of got a little bit of a lava pool going on in here. We are, of course, though, going to need to splash around the torch launcher. There we go, fire in the hole, away go the torches. Oh, it looks so cool, doesn't it, with torches up in the far crevices lighting this area up. Now, I kind of like the idea of this place being low lit, although that's going to make it monster hell. Maybe we just put a few torches around, maybe it's okay. Now, if I, in the perfect world, if I have more time to dedicate to this build, I would put around some braziers and make this look like a proper dragon's den. But, um... But I'm not sure how long Safira is going to live here, because she's going to need to help us with our dragon's forge. Luckily enough, this is far enough away from our base, so we don't have to worry about her going hungry and stuff, because she shouldn't be chunk-loaded while we're away. And she can wash her tail in the, uh, oh, what's she doing now? She can wash her tail in the water. That's fine. There we go, Safira. Enjoy your little dragon roost. I think that's pretty cool. So we'll leave her to it and let's look into dragon forges. So we need dragon forge, fire brick, lightning brick, or ice brick. Now we've got a lightning dragon, so I want to make a lightning forge. Let's put these over there on the left. So we've got... The Dragon Forge Lightning Brick, the Lightning Aperture, and the Lightning Core. Perfect. So the Lightning Brick is five of any kind of scale. Wait, no, hang on a sec. Oh no. Oh no. I haven't thought this through. Oh no! I think we need to make this out of a specific type of Dragon Scale. <gasps> so for a Lightning one, we need specifically Copper Black purple, all of the lightning colored. Oh, well, okay. So I can make eight bricks. Let's open the book and find out what we need. So we need three layers. And first up, we're going to need one aperture and one core. So let's make those two things. Lightning aperture. And lightning core. Perfect. The heart and the flame. And now we're going to need how many bricks? Let's count them. So we're going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I think I'm going to have to head back into the piglin world and oh, hunt down some more lightning dragons. So I'm going to take care of that. And be back in a jiffy. Oh man, there's a, there's, I think I need to kill three or four of these lightning dragons. Luckily enough, it takes like about 10 hits from this sword. So I should be okay. There we go, a bit of night vision should help. Ooh, what's this down here? This could be what we're looking for. Oh, hello, who are you? Oh, it's a, it's a flame dragon. Well, I might as well kill him, why not? I don't even need a... Oh, no, I do need a... All the modium apple. There we go. Come here, you. You waste of space. 1,000 health. Almost there. And there we are. He's out for the count. There we are. Dragon scales, but they're bronze. Not what we're looking for. We need lightning dragons. Okay, let's continue the hunt. Aha, uh -huh, another desert. Could this be where we find a lightning dragon? Time will tell. Ah, oh my god. Yep, there's one. He's an angry one as well. Low level though, because he's got a surface nest. Man, what's crazy about this Vorpal sword is sometimes it deals like insane amounts of damage. 
Oh my god, this thing is dead already. No sweat. Now, as always, the most dangerous thing about killing dragons is bees. 24 amethyst scales. Not very much. But it's a start, right? Okay, so several headaches later and I have returned with a whole bunch of dragon scales. Oh my god, what an ordeal, man. But hopefully now I should never really need to go back into that cursed realm to slay dragons because I've got everything I need right here, right? For the most part? Oh god, I hope so. I think I have everything I need now to construct the forge. Now we're going to do this out of the way so as not to destroy anything when we activate the forge. So let's create the forge out here in the middle of nowhere. And get rid of this spectral eye amulet. So this is a pretty simple look at how it looks. Basically layer one is the bottom layer I suppose. And then lightning dragon bricks like that. Then layer two. We want the core in the center. The aperture on the outside like that. I think this is how it works. And then surround this with the lightning bricks. And now lightning bricks again on top in a pattern like that. And the four corners again are dragon scale blocks. So let's go and grab some more. Oh no, wait, these aren't dragon scale bricks. These are dragon bone bricks. Oh, that's much easier. Okay, back here at the forge and let's dig up these scale blocks. Replace them with dragon bone blocks. Yeah, and this looks a lot neater as well, doesn't it? These dragon bones. Now, I don't think this turns into anything special as far as multi-blocks go. But there we go, the core. So this is a dragon forge lightning core. There's a, a block for like uh, an ingot. So what we're trying to make is alloys. There's unobtainium and all the modium unobtainium and vibranium, and vibranium and all the modium. All of the three mixed together in twos. So we're going to go for the two hardest ones to find. The, brain, the vibranium and the unobtainium. And you get them by... Where's the dragon forge? Dragon forge. Oh, okay. So you need an ice dragon to make these. For all the modium and unobtainium, you need... Perfect, a lightning dragon. So let's get some unobtainium dust and some all the modium dust. There we go, 10 all the modium dust, 10 unobtainium dust. Now let's go and grab Sephira Sephira. Hope she's still doing okay. Oh man, she loves it, doesn't she? She loves her little roost. Let's mount this baby. And uh, see if we can escape her roost. Or is she trapped in there? She might actually be trapped in there. <laughs> it is It is kind of tight. Oh, no, there we go. There we go. We're flying, boys. We are a-flying. And away we go. Down to the Dragon Forge. I do hope these blocks are immune to um, turn, being turned into ash. Because if they're not, that would really suck. Okay, now, stay, Sephira, stay. Stay. Good girl. Here, have a treat. It's real, authentic Sipsco Doit. Made by yours truly. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. So look, this is definitely becoming a multi-block structure. So if we put all the modium dust there, and unobtainium dust there, and I think we just get this baby to breathe fire on it now. I think also she's supposed to do it automatically, and you don't do it manually, and that would make sense, because if you do it manually, that's when you start fires. So. Is she going to do it? How do you know? How do you find out? I mean, it doesn't look like she's doing it. I really don't want to, like, right click and <laughs> incinerate my dragon forge bricks because these things are valuable and if they turn to ash, I'm just going to I'm just going to end this series right now. There's no I will never financially recover from that. Safira? Oh. Yeah, he's doing it. Yeah, look at this. Okay, this is very weird. He's kind of doing it, but kind of not doing it. 
Okay, um, let's try this one more time. So the aperture is in the right spot. Let me take the items out of here. We're just going to dig up the aperture and then place it back down. We're going to forget the chain for now because this should work. Put the items back in. Like so. Yeah, let's just jimmy the dragon around a bit. See if we can get him to the right spot. Oh. Oh, look at that. He's turned it all to ash. That's new. Okay. Maybe, uh, okay. Moment of truth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try using... Oh, it's doing it. It's doing it for an extended period of time. I'm just going to not move at all now. Wait here for a couple of minutes and see if I can get some ingots out of this. Ooh, baby. So let's get out now and see what's happened. Yeah, so the dragon has stopped as soon as I've gotten off the dragon, but... Oh, baby, look at this. We have two all the modium alloy ingots. No freaking way. Quest complete. All the modium alloy ingot. Holy smokes. Doesn't taste good, though. Well, no, I wouldn't have thought so. Looks like candy. We are in the end game now. Boom. Shocking metallurgy. Ooh, so we can re-diagnose this uh, dragon forge sometime later, but let's put this to good use. Let's make something out of this alloy. What if I make a silent gear weapon out of this? Okay, blueprint book, machete blueprint. And this is used with three different materials to make the blade. Well, let's go and see if I can get another piece of the metal from the forge. Aha, uh -huh, now we're talking. Oh my god, oh my god. So check this out. An unobtainium or the modium alloy machete blade has 500 attack damage. Now, that is pretty frickin' sweet. Um, cure Wither, Cure Nausea, Cure Levitation, Advanced Flame Ward, Brilliant, Advanced Aquatic, Indestructible, and Malleable. Holy smokes. Ding, ding, ding. Let's take this off. Now we're going to go and find our Black Razor. That should be in our backpack somewhere, right? Whew, there it is, the Black Razor. So what happens when we replace the blade? Holy moly, 834 attack damage. That's freaking nuts. Even better than our Sunraiser Morgan. Now also, what I want to do is I want to change the cosmetic armor that I'm wearing now into Dragon Scale because I'm betting that this Dragon Scale armor looks freaking amazing. There's the boots. Now the chest piece, the most expensive part. Oh yeah, okay, let's try this on. Oh, oh, he's going for it. Look at this. It works. Oh my god, that's amazing. Oh yeah, look at this armor. This is freaking amazing. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Oh yeah, this looks amazing. Very, very cool. Okay, my dudes, thank you for watching this episode of All the Mods 6 Feed the Bees. Modded Minecraft at its finest. And this episode we constructed the Dragon Forge. And as you can see in the background, Sephira is smelting up our All the Modium Unobtainium Alloy as we speak. A huge thank you to all of you guys for watching, subscribing, and pressing like. And also a big thank you to all of you guys that are channel members. I love you guys loads. Until next time though, take care. <laughs>